Hi, this is Amy Lewis, Marketing Manager at Cisco. We're here with Engineers Unplugged, and I've got Josh and John, and I was eavesdropping, because it's what I do, and they were talking about their home labs, and I wanted them to talk a little bit about what technologies they wanted to implement in their home labs, and what they were looking to do in the future, and they agreed to do it. So, are you ready? Are you guys ready? Ready. All right, thanks, Amy. All right, so John, it's really good to finally get to meet in person. Um, you know, we, we started our conversation off pretty pretty fast, talking about the, the new Mac Minis and talking about our home labs and the things that we try to do to accomplish, you know, uh, well, let me ask you, what do you do with your home lab? Why do you have a home lab? Well, my goal and, and what I'm really trying to do is find better ways to understand how virtualization ties into the network. Uh, you know, there's there's so many VCPs out there that understand how to administer a virtual machine, right. but the networking aspects are not necessarily their strengths always. And the engineers in the network world don't necessarily understand the virtual networking. So I'm trying to figure out ways to bridge that gap and, and help help at least myself and other team members understand that networking. So real quick, draw out what's your home lab looks like. All right. Yep. All right, so uh, John's going to draw real quick uh, a little outline of what his home lab looks like. Um, he's got a little more gear uh, and kit in his home lab. I think, if I remember correctly, it was two uh, 1950s, both running ESXi. Um, you've got some storage that you're connecting to, and uh, I believe that's a Cisco switch that you're connecting to. Yep. Not a plug for Cisco, but we are who we are. So, what, okay. yeah. so what I have is a, is a pair of ESX hosts. And then I've got a 3750X, which I was lucky enough to come by, that, that gives me that uh, connectivity. Right. I have a storage array, and I actually have several. I, I play a little bit with some of the open source stuff, such as FreeNAS. Um, and most also, I, I was fortunate enough to get a NetApp box. So I have a NetApp at home that I can play with to give me some of that NFS capability. The two Dell servers act as both of my main hosts. One of the things you and I were talking about was while I love to play with these, the problem is my virtual center has to run on these today. I'm needing that third box that's really not part of the lab. So, as you were mentioning, uh, I think Apple has just released the new version of a Mac Mini, which is really exciting because there's a lot of a lot of dialogue on the web about how to turn a Mac Mini server into an ESX host. This gives me the ability to put maybe my vCenter and I hope you can read my writing, put my vCenter off on a third box where I can actually destroy or play with or do whatever I need to do with my main system in, in, during the learning process. But the real goal here is to, to play with the virtual switching and then even you know, download maybe Nexus 1000V and see what I can do with understanding those products, learning more about the networking aspects. So in, in part of the conversation, you know, a, a lot of our audience has something not too dissimilar from this, at least in the conversations that I've had. And I kind of posed a little challenge up with our topic being an active, active home lab. And I think the first stage of that active, active really comes in to go into a, a solid practice of bringing in those key functions over into its own little area so that you're free to move here. Because I can say I've destroyed some ESX hosts that I didn't really want to destroy. And I've had some limitations in my own environment. Now, one thing I wonder, and you know, being in the role that you're in and with the guys that you're working with SEs, like, what types of things do you see that you may be able to start incorporating here that people are starting to incorporate into the data centers so that you can actually provide active-active and be able to geographically separate these workloads? Do you, do, do you have plans for that? or? Yeah, I love the look. Because I wish everybody would have saw that look. So talk about that look that you just gave me. Because I think everybody knows where we're going, but I'm just curious because I know you've thought about it. Yeah, so uh, definitely thought about it. I think that, that really gets out of, out of my price range. But, you know, if, if World was Nirvana, yes, I, I would be pl probably playing with some of the Cisco ASR products so I could use the OTV stuff at home, uh, overlay transport. I'd love to be able to have my iTunes data store geographically dispersed, you know, and maybe some family photos, you know, I think music. Um, but have the ability to extend this across a data center and start leveraging some of the VMware, 
the VMware long distance vMotion things in my training and in my, my lab, and playing with the, the more active, active advanced storage, trying to figure out how to replicate my storage to a remote location, even if that's across the room, across you know, a couple of routers maybe, right. you know, simulate that, that WAN. So, you know, another thing that I always thought would be kind of cool is if you actually had your buddy or a coworker who has his stuff over here, right? And he's over in his house and then creating some kind of, oh, you thought about that one too. You know, just being able to kind of create your own uh, hybrid cloud with, with home labs. Uh, what do you think it would take for uh, pulling that one off? So, so we have the basis of that already started. Um, oh, nice. That involves a firewall, and in, in my case, it's the smaller one, but an ASA 5505, building a VPN, VPN to a remote location, and you know, maybe another, uh, another team member's house and setting up a lab there. Storage becomes the big piece. I mean, I, you know, the, the network, if, you know, for the networking engineer in me is usually pretty easy, trying to learn those storage aspects. How do I replicate to that remote location? How do I do a VPN? I'm not that strong at security, but, but trying to learn the aspects of, of making that work. Um, those are the pieces that, that really pull this together for a remote lab. Great, and then I got one last question because you know we established that the real value here is in, in building and honing your skills, learn, you know, filling in those gaps where you're maybe not as strong as security. Now you manage SEs for Worldwide Technology. Um, how, how does this, affect the quality of the SEs and what you expect from them or, or the quality that they output? Um, because a lot of our audience are people who are either SEs looking to get into those roles or, or involved in those types of scenarios and may, may be wondering whether to invest in a home lab. Yeah, so the, the world we live in is moving to virtual and it's been traditionally easy at least over the last few years to get a switch and a router and, and learn route switch. Learning that in a virtual environment is what's changing the game. And having the ability to build this with storage included now is, is really the part that's got to make their, their skills ready for that next, that next level, that next customer need for tomorrow. Cool. Well, John, I really appreciate it. That was a lot of fun. I'll hand it back over to Amy because she's the boss. Well, at least once. Um, so this is fantastic. I'm make sure we can see the whole screen for a minute. This is really interesting stuff, and I like where you're talking about the evolution of the home lab and its role in, in education and training. Um, usually, we have unicorns on the show, but you know what? Oh, oh, he's going for it. I have to say, there's something else. There's something else here. It's not every day we have one of these. So, do you wanna, do you wanna tell me a little bit how, how this guy got here? He's like a unicorn. So, uh, so this guy came, my, my, my children bought this for me while we were traveling from the International Spy Museum in D.C. They wanted me to take him wherever I go and get pictures in various fun and you know, different places and send those back so that they could feel like they were part of my travels. So he, he has now become part of the Southeast team with Worldwide and he's in all of our meetings and he gets uh, bombed into almost every photo and, and obviously now video shoot. That's awesome. So we have our very first um, gnome, spy gnome video bomb. I love it. So thanks so much, guys. Um, that's it for Engineers Unplugged. You can uh, see us at engineersunplugged.com. Until next time.